talk I've been very excited and looking forward to giving. It's a, it's a topic that I'm really passionate about. Three keys to fueling organic momentum for efficient growth. And this really is close to my heart. I've been in the marketing and advertising space for, for many years. And I uh, always felt that I wanted to build something long-term for all my clients. So I've steered my agency in the direction of really focusing on organic growth. We do uh, a lot of content that ideally has very evergreen, long-lasting, compounding effects, much different from any sort of pay-per-click where you click and it's gone. I feel like uh, if you can build something organically and gain that momentum, that you really have an asset uh, for your company that is, uh, you know, one of the most important things you can build. And I'm really honored to be sharing the stage here with Kim, the CEO of Typeform, who is also very passionate about this and knows quite a lot about it. So do you want to speak a little bit about why this is an important topic for you, Kim? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Casey, and uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. It's a uh, true uh, pleasure and honor. Um, I would say that um, growing efficiently, it's quite a timely topic nowadays. Um, and I would argue that it's also timeless. So it's not only a tactic for the current situation, current environment, it's also a strategy uh, for the company. And yes, I'm, I'm truly passionate about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. And I've just recently learned about how much Typeform has grown under your leadership. So do you want to speak a little bit to exactly what Typeform does and, and how it's grown in the past uh, four years or so, five years that you've been running it? Yes, uh, I will be um, in November, four years, uh, since I started at Typeform as CEO. Um, during this time, we went from around 32, 33,000 um, customers, paying customers to um, around 140,000 today. Wow. It's a testament to the work of the team. And, and yeah, I, I would say we've done that uh, very efficiently as well, right? So uh, that, that growth um, through three main mindsets um, has, has helped us um, be where we are today and also look at the future uh, very positively. Fantastic. Yeah, so let's dive in to the three key topics here. The first one is a hot topic that almost every talk I've seen has at least touched upon. This is product-led growth. And um, I see Typeform really excelling at this. When I'm filling out a form online, I love to see the type form. It's very subtle, but it's there. The branding does not seem to get in the way. It doesn't look like a banner ad or anything like that. It gives me a little confidence that that type, that form was not just coded uh, in a couple hours, that somebody had to spend some time uh, with that. So you've really achieved some significant product-led growth. What's, uh, what's the key there? So. Basically, I would emphasize that these three topics we will talk about, starting with product, um, that's not something you can turn on and turn off immediately, right? So that's why I, I mentioned this cannot be an afterthought. This needs to be something of, um, you know, starting from the mindset. In terms of the product, um, my question is always, what products do you love, right? So what, what products do you love and why do you love them? And then, build that product or that type of product for your customers. When I think about that, uh, maybe three things come up. Um, number one is it's truly useful. It, it really helps me. That product helps me do something that for me is important in, in my profession. The second thing is um, that product, uh, it's easy to use uh, by, by everyone involved. At Typeform, uh, we we do not only think about the customer, who is basically the one that is empowered by our product, that's creating um, those online interactions, but also thinking about the uh, respondent, the person on the other side, uh, providing that feedback, that information that is very valuable. And so everybody involved in this um, equation needs to find it uh, very useful and, 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 and very easy. And the third one is um, providing a great experience also for everybody, right? So um, one of the things around that, for instance, is does your customer um, feel a much better professional? Are you helping the customer be that better professional? You know, Will they go and talk to other people 
um, look what I can do with this, right? Because that's what links with um, recommendation, um, uh, of course, virality, and, and, and other things, right? So I, I would say, what products do you love and why you love them, and then build that uh, for your customers. That's not always easy because there's pressures, right? So we have to grow, we, we need more sales, and then sometimes that very important thing kind of becomes a little bit secondary. Interesting, yeah, so that may be one of the mistakes people are letting go of the UX experience a little bit, focusing on other metrics that may not be as important to the long-term growth, and that I think brings us right into our second point here, this long-term focus on efficiency. And this is something that really boggles my mind when I see founders and I see uh, different companies working on something that they know is not evergreen and that they know will not be of value in two years. It's just this quick opportunity that they're trying to uh, grab and they're, you know, taking that opportunity cost away from something that could be a long-lasting um, piece of uh, technology, potentially, that they're building. And this long-term focus on efficiency makes me think of Jeff Bezos quite a bit. He has this dogged, relentless focus on the long-term. So can you speak a little bit more to the, the long-term focus on efficiency and how you uh, apply that in, inside of Typeform? Yeah. Uh, there's maybe three three words there, right? So long-term, right? So um, the pressures of the day-to-day -day sometimes um, make us think only on the short term, but you have to think of what's good in the long term. Um, then focus, right? So th that, that means um, trying to decide what you will do versus all of the options. And the third word um, that I would add here is customer, right? So it's a long-term focus on what's good for the customer, right? And in that, maybe the key question here would be, how are we gonna um, solve this challenge or this problem, right? So what, what's, what's the best way, right? And when I think about it, um, I think about knowing who you are, right? So we companies are, let's say, unique. They are the total sum of the, of the people that compose these companies, and they will have, therefore, certain strengths. So knowing who you are allows you to leverage a lot on those strengths. So you're playing your game, not your competitor's game, or based on what the competitor is very good at, right? So who you are. Secondly, what's, do you have clarity on the problem we are trying to solve, on the challenge we, we are going after, and, and what options can arise? So when we are in the, um, let's say, problem space, um, there can be a lot of ideas. When you think about these ideas, usually, in my experience, there are not so many viable, good options. So when you have certain criteria, right, right. Um, a lot of those ideas w will not comply with these criteria. So um, clarity around the options paired with these criteria, meaning what's the definition of success, right? So we are trying to solve for this. How are we going to measure our progress, right? And a lot of times this is also related with at the company level, right? Not at the, let's say, um, maximum or local maximum, right? So that goes beyond that. And then um, you prioritize. So that's, that's the focus, right? So that's becoming uh, more of an essentialist and thinking, you know, um, um, you know, what's essential, what's critical, right? When you do these three things, so you know who you are, you have clarity on the problem, you define, um, you know, the, the success and, and you decide how to go about something, because your focus, you can really plan. And you can also move from the discovery phase to the scaling up phase in that particular motion. So you can plan well for all the dependencies, for everything that is needed. You can plan for what's going to be tested and proven. And then you can plan for, okay, if this works, how are we going to double down on this? And how are we going to scale it through a certain, let's say, efficient, scalable process, right? So all of that is kind of um, there when your mindset is not about 
testing 25 things, but more thinking about how are we going to truly uh, solve the challenge or the problem that we have in front of us. Absolutely. And I think that's a, a, a really key takeaway with success metrics is deciding those ahead of time when you're starting an initiative, not when you're in the middle of it or at the end of it. And you say, well, it kind of worked. It kind of didn't. It was a kind of a 50-50 or a 51-49. Uh, it's a lot harder to make that decision to scale in that moment. But if you've said early on, if we meet this specific criteria, then we will you know, scale and double down on that. Uh, and I think uh, another key point there is making sure that one metric is not at the detriment of another metric. And that gets us right into the third, uh, third key point here is making sure that you have very strong cross-team collaboration. So I see this in my work all the time as we're creating content for all these different B2B SaaS companies. Oftentimes the marketing team is not uh, even telling the sales team that some of this content exists. So making sure that there is some good cross-team collaboration uh, I think is, is a really important key to organic growth. And I know you have some thoughts about that as well. Yeah, that's for me, let's say, top of mind again, um, the third one of those kind of mindsets, no? things that cannot become an afterthought because you cannot, let's say, it links into culture, it links into how you think about um, how we work together in this company, what do we value, right, in, in working together. And this is something that you cannot decide Monday morning it's going to be different. Right. And, and here, what I, I, I think it's again knowing about who, who you are and what do you want, so it starts with that clarity. Um, in our case, um, I, I strongly lean in towards um, teamwork and collaboration. When you have that, um, then things like communication are easier because you are always aware of um, who are you working with and therefore you will be more mindful about um, making sure that you're not leaving somebody behind, you know, like right. uh, people have their information. So I always try to start with a question, right? And here the question is, how are we making sure that uh, our efforts compound across the company, you know? And you were saying, you know, sometimes this team versus that team, they have this definition of success maybe, which is a local maximum, right? And, and we, we see an impact here and this improves. But actually, down the funnel in some other place, this, this has a negative effect and one thing cancels. Or, or we have this team thinking about solving this problem for the customer and that team thinking about how we talk about something else with the customer, you know, um, to the customer. So in that sense, um, how do we compound effects, right? How, how my effort will help you, um, you know, and, and with your effort and for a greater impact. And the only way I can see this is, uh, is through collaboration. Um, and so that also involves, you know, how, how we think about hiring, how we onboard people, how we um, provide the right dynamics and experience. And, and, and it also goes back to once you have that culture, uh, clarity around the process, right? So what do you do? What do I do? And why does this together m make sense? Wonderful. Yeah. And I think with all of these three different keys, you know, just to reiterate the three of them, focusing on the product-led growth, focusing on the long-term and uh, growing with efficiency, and the strong uh, cross-team collaboration, uh, these are not tactics. These are not like little buttons that, you, like you said, you can't just wake up one day and decide, oh, I'm going to implement product-led growth today. These things need to compound over time. So uh, they need to really be implemented um, it, and embedded in your action items on a quarterly or even maybe a monthly basis, jotting down and thinking about things that you can do on this leadership level and embedding all of these into your culture uh, because they're some of the most important, but they're also some of the most elusive uh, programs to implement. So any last thoughts from you, Kim? I absolutely plus one to what you said. Um, in my opinion, this is truly strategic. Um, eventually, this creates a great difference down the, down the road. Uh, I would say if you want it, right, it becomes that strategic. If, if you, as a leader of the company, founder, executive of the company, you want it, it will create that uh, a strategic mindset. And then I would say um, product. Is your product 
easy enough, get feedback, you know, like be close to the customer. Are, uh, is the customer understanding well what you're trying to do, right? Is, is your team finding it easy to collaborate or not, you know? So in all of these things, um, again, um, at Typeform what we use is Typeform. So we, we try to interact as much as possible with our customers, with our employees, and try to understand, you know, whether that product is the one that they have and they need whether, the, um, um, let's say, they understand how to use it well, whether people can work and feel satisfied and, and engaged with, with their work. So, um, yeah, I encourage you all to, to think about it. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you spending some time with me, and thanks for everyone uh, for listening in. Thank you.